I kept my promise. That's three videos in three days. Crazy. But today we're going to be talking about the Canon EOS R5 and who this camera is essentially designed for. Welcome back to the channel everyone. Thank you for stopping on in for the video. If you saw yesterday's Sony video, I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be talking about the mainstream competitor of the A7S III, the EOS R5. So let's get into this little chat. As I said yesterday, the Sony camera is essentially just a video focused camera with insane autofocus and all that sort of thing, where the um, Sony A7R, <laughs> there's so many numbers and letters where the Sony A7R4 is made for photo, A7S3 is made for video. However, Canon has essentially delivered here in the R5 an all-rounder camera that can do insane photos and take some crazy video with what we've seen with an 8K raw filming capacity. This is Canon's attempt to go all out in specs, which we haven't really seen before. And it's great. It's a really good step in the right direction for Canon. And I think this camera is gonna sell just as well, if not better, or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how well it sells, but I think it's gonna be a hit. It's gonna to have to do a bit of fine tuning. You need to keep into consideration that any negative reviews because of overheating or ibis wobbles or any of that sort of thing, it's just because also these people who are doing these reviews are doing reviews on they're not the final product. And firmware updates happen and all this sort of stuff. So if we put 8K time limits on 8K RAW, that sort of fixes the issue. If we put time limits on 4K 120, you're not gonna be shooting 4K 120 for an hour. Like, do you know how, you know, you will never get through an SD card. 4K 120 is gonna fill up an SD card in 15 minutes. Like, <laughs> it's not, you're not gonna use it like that. So I think that the negativity is a little overhyped, just personal opinion here on my, my little bit of knowledge here, but I'm gonna talk about who the Canon R5 is made for. This and Canon has always been at its core, a photography company. They have always delivered in their DSLRs for good photography cameras where their cinema line cameras have obviously been for cinema. This is their first step to try and bring their cinema grade quality into a small mirrorless, you know, compact body. And it's going to be insane. A 40 megapixel camera is going to be really, really good for <laughs> all your photo needs. We've got the little, you know, a little joystick back on the back of the camera. We've got a heap of settings, heap of awesome features with the autofocus and the autofocus tracking and eye detection and all that scene. It's gonna be an insane photo camera. However, the video specs is where a lot of people are here now because video has become a really, this is the way of the world at the moment. Video is how we create content now and cameras need to be able to deliver here. And they have. <laughs> so Canon, Customers have been complaining for a while about, you know, the DSLR and mirrorless cameras Canon has released just due to the lack of specs. You haven't got 4K 120, you haven't even got 1080p 120 in this, you know, R body. However, going up here now, we have the 4K 120 and we have 8K raw 30, which is insane. We got massive specs. And the idea of this is, is you're a photographer going out on a shoot. A lot of the time you need to shoot video and photo and you want to keep your kit as minimal as you can. Having, you know, a cinema camera on your body or another 1DX Mark II on, in you, that's another whole range of lenses you need to have on you. So to have an EOS R and a 1DX II with EF lenses and RF lenses, it just doesn't make sense anymore. So the R5 is essentially the mirrorless version of the 1DX II or three. I guess there's a, I have 1DX three out now. So Canon has essentially just brought in features that they've needed from other things that they've had. So obviously their DSLR cameras and brought it into their new RF line of lenses and cameras. You don't want to be carrying, as I say, a 1DX Mark III, two EF lenses, and then an R5 and three RF lenses because you get much better performance with the RF lenses on the R bodies without adapters and all that sort of stuff. So this is where this new R5 lands. And I think it's going to be a hit of a camera. It's a beast. And that is essentially who I think is made for. So the photographers who are coming from the DSLR range photo and video that can really flourish and make better content with their new mirrorless cameras. So for the photographers who want to also be filmmakers, it's essentially who this is for. 
And then we have, that was a short video today. I'm just looking at the timer on the side of the camera here. Five minute, quick little edit. Well, I'd like to see what you guys have to say and what you think about the R5 and the Airwit. I'm gonna never get this right. <laughs> I'd like to hear what you guys have to think about the R5 and the A7S III in the comments down below and let me know what you think and which one you're gonna be looking at getting if you're gonna get either. I won't be getting either for the time being. I've got my R and I'm, I'm loving it. So that is essentially today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.